Yo, guys, it's Kyle coming at you from Bain's Film Reviews. Today, I am sitting down with Nathan Morris, the director, and Aminder Verdi, the writer of My Eyes Are Up Here, a fantastic short film about inclusion, diversity, and acceptance in a bunch of different ways. Um, wonderful short film. Had the pleasure of watching about a month ago now, and I'm so excited to sit down with both of you guys and, and chat about it. So thank you so much for your time, and how are, how are we doing today? Yeah, not bad. Um, uh, we have a really difficult heat wave here in the UK, so it's a, it's been a bit of a sticky day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm great. Thanks for having us. Of course, of course. We just, I just, as we started, I heard the rain start coming down here, so the weather is terrible here as well. <laughs> so, um, Nathan, I don't know if it's headed up toward you, but you, if you get it, it's it's heavy rain. So, ah, okay. <laughs> Look forward to that. Yeah. Um, but so before we get into the actual film itself, I'm just curious how each one of you guys got into filmmaking. I'm hey, Amanda, you I, start. I, I'll say going forward, why don't you, because I found that another interview I did with Gillian, if I go first, it looks like I'm rude and interrupting. So unless, <laughs> you go first, unless you go, unless you tell me. So I always let you go first. <laughs> okay. Um, how did I get into filmmaking? I think as a child, I've been I was really interested in um, storytelling, and I've always wanted to act. My my first dream was to be an actor, but okay. um, my drama teacher was very uh, dismissive of what I can and can't do, um, and so I started putting that out of my mind, especially when I didn't see any South Asian and any Black disabled representation on the screen. Mm. Um, so. I guess after that, I kept I kept with my storytelling through art and through writing, um, and then it it kind of snowballed into performance art and theatrical kind of art, um, and then I met Arthur, our um, fellow co-writer, um, during a residency, and I was doing some work that was based on comedy and lived experience, um, and after the show. Arthur came up to me, said he really enjoyed it. He was one of the few that were uh, laughing out loud because it was quite interesting. A lot of people felt that they needed to stifle their laugh because mm -hmm. it's such a topic that people are sometimes not comfortable about laughing at. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, when Arthur came up to me afterwards, he was just really interested in whether I've done film writing or uh, script writing before, uh, which I've done a little bit of script writing for my performances and um, asked if I'd be interested to get together and kind of utilize my lived experience, my material and his writing. And yeah, this this kind of just happened. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, then, I've, yeah. Always, um, I've always wanted to be in TV since I was a little boy. I wanted to be a truck driver. I wanted to be a cameraman and I wanted to be a drummer. And um, the only thing I haven't done is truck driving. So. Um, Maybe one day, all those uh, autonomous trucks come out. I'm a bit screwed, aren't I? Yeah. The robots will take over. Um, but yeah, something I've always kind of wanted to do. It was really hard for me to get into because in New Zealand wasn't really. I grew up in New Zealand in a little town uh, called Upper Hutt, which is pretty close to Wellington, and it's pretty um, shit. I think it's the word. Um, I come from the <laughs> suburbs. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Upper Hutt. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. No go. Anyone that's from there is like, yeah, it's a shithole. Um, it's not that image that people have of America. But but this course started in New Zealand, a short course, and I applied for it uh, on TV production, and I applied for it, and they denied me three times. And I just rang up the last time and was like, can I, look, I'm going to keep applying. And they were like, all right, you can come in. And then I managed to get a job off the back of it. And so I've been doing it a while, and I've just been making loads and loads of mistakes. So it's something I've always wanted to do, and like, yeah, I was pushed back quite a bit but managed to to wrestle my way into it interesting you guys sort of have similar you know entrances into filmmaking where you know they tried to stifle whatever your goals were and you you got in anyway and now you have this fantastic film to show for it so that's awesome thank you thank you, thank you. yeah yeah um and then so i mean my eyes are up here is very much about diversity and acceptance at the heart of it you know the entire scope of the film is about that um but you do, it's developed in a way throughout the film that's very organic. 
It's never over the top. It's never too aggressive. And how do you find a good balance in, you know, doing justice to this important topic while not being too aggressive and being able to appeal to viewers? Oh, you're on mute, Mindy. Oh, yep, you're muted. I do that so much. Um, <laughs> I, I guess a lot of it comes from my own lived experience and the way I've had to navigate a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, and through the writing, I always, within my own performance work, um, I, I like to use um, kind of raw honesty mixed with humour because mm -hmm. I find that it's usually a lot more digestible, especially when it's topics that um, people often feel are very different from their own. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also humor has also been the way that I've coped with a lot of things in life in general. It's yeah. kind of my coping mechanism. Um, and so I didn't, one of the initial things of going into this, I didn't want it to be about this is wrong. You can't do this. You shouldn't do this. Um, I just wanted it to be a reality of what we actually go through mm -hmm. and the joys, the pain, the funny moments, the pleasure, um, the things that get omitted from screen. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that just came strange to say, but naturally because mm -hmm. of just the way I've had to navigate life. And that also came, had to be written throughout the uh, scripts through the char characters um, mm. who was initially based on me. Yeah. Well, they say write what you know, and I'm sure that you being familiar with the topic and the character made it much easier to introduce the topics and the character in a way that was just very natural and honest. So, and it, and it works. And it, it's, it's very clear yeah. throughout the film. Oh, that's great. Right. Yeah, I think having having Mindy's like, I mean, her viewpoint is is the, is the viewpoint, and that's vital to the success of it. Mm. And I look at it like, um, for me, it's a romantic comedy, and that's what yep. I tell people. I was just at Tribeca, and I had this guy sit down with me and explain his film to me. It's a fifteen minute film, and he spent half an hour talking about it. And he was a lovely guy, but he was very intellectual and 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 uh, film theory sort of person, which is all good. And he looked at me and was like, what's your film about? And I was like, it's a romantic comedy. Um, and, and for me, first and foremost, and that's a great way in because um, people, we most of us have been in relationships and stuff, and we can all relate to that, and that's a universal theme. And then mm -hmm. underneath that, you've got all these other bits of uniqueness and beauty that comes from, and not beauty, that comes from Aminda's experiences. So you can mm -hmm. suck them in with this story and then teach them without knowing. And to me, as a filmmaker, I mean, that is film. I love comedy and I love absurd, like absurd stuff and stuff. But I think if there's no underlining reason to tell the story, you're kind of a little bit, it's fine. I mean, but um, mm -hmm. it's great if there's something that really grounds it. And I think we were so lucky. I was so lucky to meet him and, and have her story and have her alongside me the whole time to like help so I could help amplify that. But it's a it's a nice little trick, I think, that this film does. Yes, for sure. That's a, that is a unique way to look at it. I hadn't, you know, I hadn't labeled it a romantic comedy, but it it for sure is. Yeah. Um, and then you know, continuing on on the idea of diversity, because I mean, it's impossible to address the movie without talking about it, because it, again, it's so important to it. Um, and a lot of times, I find that you know, diversity can be very divisive in a film. Um, it doesn't need to be, but it often is because of the way it's presented. But this film, it's so good at developing, you know, it's technically sound in so many ways. The sound is phenomenal. The cinematography is phenomenal. It's a great narrative. And all these things work together to support one another. And they're all these pieces of a whole. So what's it like creating, you know, it's like this balancing act of doing everything so perfect in a way that everything supports everything else. What's, what's that process like? I think Nathan should go first for this one. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Um, it's really, really hard. It was really tricky. It was a real, uh, a new experience. It, um, 
balancing i think our team is very inclusive and mm. i think that really helps with um with 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 the way that it comes across because we have all these viewpoints. I think having a diverse crew means you have a bunch of different viewpoints and a, a, duff, a bunch of different ways people look at the world. And so I'm listening to all of those as a director and I'm trying to funnel them into a way that's not, like my world is so different from Aminda's world. So I want the film to appeal to someone like me, someone like mm -hmm. you, someone like Aminda. And so all of our opinions um, come in and feed and, and then that comes out. I have a background in documentary and that is often about I'm basically meeting someone and I'm figuring out how to illustrate their life on camera. Mm -hmm. And because if you act a certain way on camera, you you don't come across how you think you do. I hate being filmed. Yeah. I'm not enjoying this. Um, <laughs> so I, because I don't think I actually come across how I am. But so okay. my job as a director is to try and like figure out how to make that person come across the right way and then figuring out these access points all the time. But I think having such an inclusive team and so many different personalities and so many different experiences. And then I get to funnel it was the key, I think. Cool. And Amender? Just say I yeah. think for me, it was um, <laughs> uh, a lot of the technical side of it. It was interesting for me to see um, Nathan working. It was interesting for me to see the editing process um, and the sound work. But more than anything, um, one of the first things that was important um, and that I was really happy that Nathan um, was completely understanding and on board with was ensuring that the lens was was the right, that it was the right lens, basically, um, and that it was um, uh, through an experience through my eyes. Because often when you do have a... Um, a story about disability it's about disability from a non-disabled person mm. or it's um, about disability that has a very stereotypical kind of miserable um, story mm. uh, and I think that I think that working with the lens of it working with the narrative and, and all of um, Nathan's technical um, expertise it was just incredible to watch it all you know come together watch the words jump off the page and actually into real life it was bizarre at times as well um, mm -hmm. seeing um, kind of moments that I've had reenacted yeah. <laughs> um, but it was also kind of beautiful um, knowing that it could be interpreted in a, in a different way. Mm. I imagine that had to be very rewarding seeing yourself on screen or seeing parts of yourself on screen um, and play out so well. I, I imagine that has to be rewarding in, in a lot of ways. It, I had loads of these questions last night. Um, I, I, I was awarded um, this Lodestar Award by Film London last night. And, Very nice, um, congrats. Thank you. A lot of the questions were about uh, kind of this and I, I still don't have the words. I, I try and like merge words together to try and yeah. <laughs> explain it, but it's um, it's still really surreal to me. I'm I'm still trying mm. to process a lot of it. Um, it just it feels incredible to finally have that moment for my inner child who wanted to see some representation on screen. Yeah. Um, and so, last question about diversity, but I wanted to I wanted to address the, this part as well. So diversity might be the hottest topic in cinema right now. I mean, it seems like every movie I watch is, is trying to be inclusive in one way or another. Yeah. Um, and so in a world where maybe to some that that part of cinema feels saturated, you guys separate yourself from the others in a lot of ways. So how do you go about separating yourself from all these other films? I think, uh, uh, again, it's about, I mean, I hate worthy films. I hate worth, I, I hate things that are just worthy. I grew up in this really mm. annoying, sorry, mum and dad, um, uh, Christian, <laughs> uh, hardcore Christian family. And they would okay. talk to me about things they truly believed. And I truly, I respect their beliefs. I don't agree with them. But the way they taught me these things were just so bloody boring and worthy and put me to sleep. And I rebelled. 
so I think if you're trying to get something important across, you have to wrap it up in something interesting and fun and relatable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong and it becomes so divisive. Diversity shouldn't be divisive. Diversity should be, right. it's life. We are Agreed. becoming more diverse. Populations are increasing. It's just life. It should be like, if there's the redneck slogan, which I think is perfect for diversity. It's the most redneck right-wing thing ever. Don't tread on me. And that's mm -hmm. what diversity is. It's like, hey, I want to be seen for who and what I am. And you want to be seen for who and what you are. It's that simple. Let's let everyone, but some a lot of people, and Aminda is better to talk about this, that have such a struggle to be seen and heard and to be taken um, like properly to be seen. Um, mm -hmm. so, but I think just trying not to be worthy, trying to be relatable just makes it more accessible. Again, it's about, for me, it's all about creating empathy. And you can relate to being rejected. You can relate to waking up after yeah. a one-night stand. So then again, you've got that in, and you don't have to be a preacher. So. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, for me, it was thinking about what moments have I had that I know other people go through, but people mm. assume I don't go through. Mm. Um, mm. And so, yeah, one of the first things was a one-night stand. And then one of the other things was um, getting the morning after pill because people often assume that when you're disabled, you're not sexual or mm -hmm. uh, or it's the other way. You're fetishized in some sort of bizarre manner. Um, and with with these universal experiences, I always find that when, when you're from a really marginalized or multiple marginalized communities, um, people often think that you're really different from them but there's so many similarities yeah and that's i think that was one of the most important things about our short we wanted to ensure we find the thread between my lived experience and the public lived experience and um it was just yeah it was just easy and plus um sex <laughs> who doesn't want to talk about sex and who doesn't want to <laughs> um you know, see, I see a beginning of a romantic short. Yeah. My mum, she doesn't want to talk about sex. <laughs> no, and by the way, true. I think my mum as well. Yeah. I'm cool with that. <laughs> um, and also, I think um, I grew up in in a South Asian strict household. Um, my my parents were immigrants, and so sex was never spoken about. Mm -hmm. Um. So when all this happened, it was like a bizarre situation for me on multiple levels and then having those experiences have, having a really fun experience and then having a really like opposite polarized experience going to get the morning after pill it yeah. was just uh, yeah it, that's usually what happens in in my day I'll have these great moments and then it's like faulted by I can't get into a shop and mm. um or a uh, I can't go up those stairs or something like that. Um, and I think, yeah, just the universality of of pulling all that together. Yeah. Um, somehow we did. <laughs> very, very cool. And then so I wanted to address one of my favorite parts of the entire film, and that's Jillian. Jillian is fantastic. Um, she just seems like she's larger than life. She is, as the, you know, as the lead in this film, but it feels like maybe that's that's how she is in real life as well. She just comes off that way in, in her acting. So I'm curious how Jillian became a part of the project and what it was like working with her. Because again, she was so fantastic. Um, we reached out, I think, uh, just after Arthur and I finished the script um, and, and Nathan came on board. Um, we reached out to Jillian because I'd seen her a poster a diesel poster for modeling in London and I was just in awe of it um and then it was great to know that um Arthur had also heard of her and so um yeah we reached out and she hadn't done any acting work at that time but was really captivated by the story because she related to it so much mm -hmm. um and when Gillian came um came to London and um was doing the rehearsals with us um, it was really, really helpful to also utilize her personality in the role. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and also th there were a few aspects of it that didn't match from my lived experience, such as me, I use crutches to walk, whereas okay. uh, Jane is a, a wheelchair user. So we uh, we altered parts of the script to fit her. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That also included her lifestyle as a model. Um, yeah. And I think in a natural way, she just, because of the conversations I've had with her, um, they felt familiar and realistic mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. That, her her awesome kind of natural um attitude just comes through yeah yeah she's amazing i love working with her and, and minda's right we we slightly changed the script to um to work with her for a couple of reasons but um yeah i i love working with her it was a really tough shoot it was like a it, it was a hard shoot for loads of different reasons and she mm -hmm. uh, she was always smiles. She was always there. She was always like, let's do this. And some scenes were really hard for her. Um, like the scene on the bus, I call it the fight scene. It's mm -hmm. When she says what everyone wants to say to a jerk, and but she just like gives it. And I love yeah. that's my favorite bit. But like, she, yeah, she was just, so that was hard for her, but she just like smashed it. And she's just, I can't say enough good things about Jillian. She's amazing. Awesome. Again, wonderful. One of my favorite parts of the entire film. She brought it. She brought everything to life with yeah. so much vigor. It was awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then so I'm curious where everyone can watch. My eyes are up here. Oh, that's a damn good question. Right now it's on the festival circuit. Mm. Um, so they kind of have these embargoes and stuff that mean yeah. Like so, right now you can watch it on Tribeca online. I know it's we're lucky enough to play it on at Sundance in London. I think they've got an online platform. So right now it's really difficult. There's a trailer, but if you go to the trailer, you'll find information about me or Aminda and get in touch. Mm -hmm. We might get a sneaky something, but um, but don't tell the festivals. But <laughs> once the festival runs down, we will be releasing it online. So um, so the best thing to do also be just like get in touch with our socials um and 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 bother us it's always really nice to hear from people like it really is because filmmaking can be really lonely and then someone's yeah. like doing this is really lovely so it's like oh i like your film and you're like really oh thanks <laughs> so get in touch i i will i will include all of your social media handles so that they can reach out and bother you uh, <laughs> um and then if you guys are working on anything else right now, I know Nathan, you said that you're very busy and uh, if you can shed some light, both of you guys on, on what's going on in your lives right now. Do you want to go Amanda? Oh, I thought you were. Um, <laughs> um, at the moment, I'm just working on a lot of writing. Um, mm. This has kind of fueled a lot of um, ideas and other than that, I'm working on, I'm also an artist, so I'm working, I've just received um, an art grant, so I'm just, I'm creating some new artwork, um, and hopefully thinking about a feature film at some point. Fantastic. Well, best of luck. Yeah, Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. Um, me, I'm, yeah, crazy busy. I'm, I've had a really quiet year, so I'm broke. Um, so please send donations here. Um. <laughs> I'll put that up to you. Um, <laughs> so I just took a job. I'm doing um, a show where I'm directing a bunch of, I, I make TV for a living, like documentary and stuff. Um, so I'm doing a new show, but also on my, I try and balance life with doing a bit of work and then doing stuff like this. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not a wealthy person, so I run out of money. Um, so anyway, I've got a couple of film scripts I'm trying to work on and a couple of TV shows. Um, and maybe we'll see Gillian and Ben um, resurface soon I'm really hoping because there's so much it's such an interesting story like yes awesome yeah, we'll see well I look forward to all of those things I will I will bother you guys as much as I can to find out more about those when the time comes uh, and then just one more question for you guys uh, what are some of your favorite films Dang. go Amanda <laughs> you want me to go so you can have a think yeah <laughs> i really forget everything i thought it was a really amazing year for film this year so recently i loved tar i loved babylon i loved everything everywhere all at once obviously last year was so good for film but it I was amazing 
Yeah, it was so good. Um, I went through a stage of like going through the Hong Kong, like John Wu stuff, like all those action films. Okay. I love films like Whale Rider, Once Warriors from New Zealand, um, What We Do in the Shadows. I love awkward comedy so much. Um, I love the Swedish director, I forget his name, who did um, um, Songs from the Second Floor. It's Roy, Roy okay. Anderson. Um, okay. Because it's this really dark but funny humor. It's very similar to um, Triangle of Sadness. He's influenced by okay. Um, but what I used to do when I was a musician, I would, music I like, I'd find these bands and I'd find out what they listen to. And I'd, I'd, okay. I'd do that. And I do the same with film. So I like, I don't know if I have favorites. Dead Man is one of my favorite films. The original Karate Kid. Oh, it's like a perfect pop song. Amazing. It's the original Karate Kid. It's like a perfect film. And watching it yeah. as a grown up, as a filmmaker now, it's like, there's all these scenes that are just one of It's like one shot. I'm like, Wow, that's an amazing production as well. Like, how did yeah. you? But um, I, I have a, I don't think my taste is as eclectic as yours from looking at your room. <laughs> but I like a lot of stuff. That's an awesome collection. Thank you. Thank you. And Aminder, what about you? Um, it's really difficult to say. Um, comedy, I'm, I'm inspired by a lot of comedy um, and even stand up. Um, because okay. it's all based on lived experience. Um, one of the first films I, I remember being really interested in the directing and the writing of was Stand By Me. Okay. Um, and that was as a child when I was literally 14 and um, not supposed to be watching it, apparently, you know, certified 15. <laughs> um, and um, it's, yeah, it was in the middle of uh, secondary school. And obviously a teacher didn't want to, teach so we watched uh, we watched um stand by me and it i was really interested in it because it was from the point of view of, of young boys and it was something i hadn't seen before mm -hmm. it was a whole um a whole area that you don't see at all still right now on screen about yeah. the, the exploration of young um boys lives and yeah I, i'd probably say that was, that was one of my favorites um other than that it's really difficult i have too many and my mind's gone blank yeah it's a <laughs> It's a really an impossible question. It is, which is <laughs> yeah. why I uh, may, maybe it's mean, but that's why I like asking it so much. <laughs> I don't like. I don't get. I'm going to go negative. The Human Centipede. No, there's a film like uh, that. Well, I've never, it. I've never seen that. I've avoided it. I don't ever plan on watching that. So concept is just no. I just yeah. Like why would you yeah. make, imagine spending months of your life making that film? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> play, diversity is all cool, but. You do you. There's Some, somebody well. likes it. Yeah, sequels. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody likes it. Somewhere, someone somewhere enjoys it and good for them. They can yeah, keep exactly. it for themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're watching, <laughs> we love you. But <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much. Um, I, I genuinely appreciate your time. You guys spending some time with me and, and talking about a really fantastic film. Thank you for having us. Yeah, you're more thanks. than welcome. Thanks so much, Carl. Like, truly, truly appreciate it. Really appreciate You're very it. welcome. And I would love to stay in touch and keep bothering you in the future. And maybe we can do this again someday. I'd love to. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You, Thank you. you guys have a great day. Thank you so much. You yes. too. Bye. Bye.